Hello guys and welcome back to my Let's Play of Jagged Alliance 2 version 1.13. This is part 9 and in this part we will mostly do stuff on the strategic screen. But before we get uh, around to that, we have some business to take care of in the mine sector. Some people to talk to and uh, houses to search through. So let's get down there. We'll have to hurry a bit though because once we reach 7.16 all of the assignments we will give to our mercenaries in this hour will be wasted, except for sleeping. But I want people, certain people to do other things than sleeping, so they need to go on that assignment at 7.15 at the latest. Just to be on the safe side, I'll set them to assignment on 7.14. Uh, because it's quite annoying to have the timer roll over on you to 16 and then waste a whole hour. And we have business to take care of in this at uh, this evening and during this night. So let's get down there and search the buildings first. Standing by. Understood. You call? Standing by. You call? Yeah. All right. Standing by. Done. Worth something, maybe. You got my ear. Yeah. Gotcha. Now this is an oddity. You call? Draft I'm into it. actually has a church here. Why the queen lets it continue is anybody's you guess. You call? But I'd bet my bottom dollar that something's up. Father Walker says she fears by. crossing the Pope. You Nothing. got my ear. Understood. Nothing. Yeah. Uh, again, gotcha. Ira. Standing by. Let's us know some details I'm about the sector. Yeah. As would her rebel bodies, but you usually only have Ira at this point in the game. Nothing. Okay. You got my ear. Standing by. Searching through these houses is a bit tedious, but they often contain medical supplies. Understood. And uh, those are very helpful in the beginning, especially. Nothing. You call? Will do. Will do. Yeah, uh, first aid kit. Hmm. That's awesome. Will do. Yeah. Oh, and you might have noticed in the strategic view that our daily income is still at zero dollars, despite us having control over this mine now. That's because you not only need to uh, take the sector. But you also need to talk to the head miner. I hear you. So he can get production gotcha. running in your What's favor. That lying around? Uh, there's often a medkit in here. Mm. Yeah, that's great. You don't really need to search all of these uh, gotcha. yes, refrigerators, but I like doing so anyway. Let's see if Grizzly can get this open. Nice. You can also find medical supplies in here most of the time. Yeah. Nothing. Not all of these items are 100%, so they won't appear I in every you. game, but uh, some of them I are there most by. of the time. Gotcha. Hmm. Marbles. Yeah, marbles Understood. are you used call? to trip soldiers. You can you throw them on the ground on a uh, surface that is smooth, and hmm. any enemy hmm. who runs over this uh, tile will trip and fall, okay. costing him action yeah. points. That's quite useful but uh, nothing yeah normally you don't really have the okay time nothing. and uh, inventory slots to use those nothing. properly standing by yeah nothing Let's get this done standing quickly by. Nothing. okay yeah okay and now you let's call? talk to him to fred well, with hello Fox. there fred morris head miner here Pleasure to meet you. The timer is paused when you talk to people, so it's no problem. I was hoping I'd get to meet you. I knew when I did that me and my men would be finally liberated from the clutches of that slave-driving dictator. The queen's in a class by herself when it comes to cruelty. To show my appreciation, I'm prepared to continue mining and turn the proceeds over to you. I'll gather the men I can, and the ore we dig is yours. You have to understand, though. A lot of the men are scared. Scared the queen will return to punish them. I won't be able to convince all of them. That will be up to you. They need to know you're for real. That you're here to stay. If Pedrana does take back this town, the people will work for her like nothing happened. It's what they know. It's how they stay alive. You mustn't hold it against any one of us. I'm sure you'll find the same attitude amongst the other mine foremen and their workers. Heck. 
This whole country is hopeful, but we will remain cautious, out of fear. All right, as I've uh, said before, Grassen is usually the first town you attack, especially on your first playthrough, and also the first mine you get. That's why in Drassen, it's always Fred, who is the head miner, and he gives you these pointers as to how the mine income system works. Uh, as he has told us right now, he uh, you need to get the people's support to actually increase the mine income. And the people's support is represented by the loyalty you have in this town. Also, it is modified by the amount of control you have. The control is just uh, how many sectors of the town you have divided by the total sectors. So right now we have two-thirds control over Drassen because we own two sectors of the three. This weather, the war, you name it. It's all El Nino, I'm telling you. Making people kind of crazy, it is. Well, I expect you have things to do, so I won't keep you. There's something about him that kind of intrigues me. Yeah, and some people, some NPCs you meet are actually kind of nice, or very nice, and on those the mercenaries will comment. There are also NPCs that are not that nice, or, uh, yeah, not the worth a nice comment, and the mercenaries will also say something about those. We'll probably hear one of those lines pretty soon, once we've taken the airport. But we'll do that later on. My plan now is to fortify our position here a bit, train militia with Steven, because he is predestined, predetermined to do that with his high, high leadership, teaching skill and assertive personality. We can get militia up quite quickly. Uh, the militia is nice to help in the defense of these sectors, but it's also very helpful in another way. If you have militia in sectors, the militia will automatically spot uh, any enemies in the adjacent sectors, and they can also tell you the number of enemies in those sectors. So that's very useful and helpful in planning where to defend and how many mercenaries you need to defend that spot. Militia costs quite a bit, uh, 750 per training cycle, and the number of uh, men and women you get out of each cycle depends on the leadership skill, as of 1.13. In 1.12 uh, you'd always get 10 per training cycle, 10 uh, militia men per training cycle. In 1.13 it's dependent on leadership. You need at least 20 points in your leadership stat to be able to train militia. And you need 60 on one of the possible two trainers uh, to always get 10 militiamen out of each training cycle. Uh, 59 is also pretty decent. He should have good odds of getting 10 and even if he fails that check, he'll still get 9. But you need someone with high leadership if you don't want to blow a lot of money on training militia. Say you use two trainers who only have 20 leadership each, they might only produce two militia for $750, uh, while Steven can produce 10 out of $750, or for $750. They are not actually created from the money. Uh, you don't have to worry about equipping militia normally, but there are mods out there that allow you to uh, equi uh, equip your militia individually. But I find that to be too much micromanagement. Alright, we still have a minute and a half to get back to exploring with all of these guys. So let's, uh, let's get them going and get them into decent positions to defend the sector in case yeah. it's attacked gotcha. from the south for example yeah Steven all right somewhere around here all right standing by and grizzly can take a look here no. standing by we can also do the rest of the exploring here in the next Understood. hour just to be Nothing. on the safe side Understood. don't want to roll the timer over uh, but uh, before we 
just uh, have our mercenaries do something else. We should do one more thing. Let's talk to Father Walker. Uh, before we do that, Father Walker uh, is the person we were asked to talk to by Miguel, the priest who will then find some supplies and other useful things the rebels need. Food, supplies, fuel maybe. Uh, and that's a quest. It's, uh, the quest in the history log. Here, rebels need food from Drassen. Uh, once we complete this quest, our mercenaries will gain some experience. All of the mercenaries present in the sector who are not unconscious, as I've said before, will gain experience points. And seeing that Grizzly is pretty close to a level up, he will surely uh, hit a level up with this uh, quest completion. Also Ira, but we don't have to worry about Ira because she's free anyway. Alright, uh, so we should extend Grizzly's contract. Let's see, he has gotten more expensive since he's already leveled up. Let's talk to him. Don't want to shock you, but prices are only guaranteed for the length of the contract. Yeah, to uh, extend contracts, simply click the remaining time and you get to negotiate with them. Uh, if you are below 72 hours remaining contract length, there's a chance that a mercenary will not extend the contract because they are already booked for a different assignment. So try to avoid going below 72 hours if you want to hold on to your mercenaries. Uh, that chance is not uh, negated by having a buddy present. Uh, I said before that having a buddy present, for example for Meltdown and Steven, it's St Steven and Meltdown respectively, uh, they will always extend their contract even if you have someone, some mercenaries uh, on your roster they don't like, or if your performance is poor and you have lots of deaths. But the problem is, that um, with uh, going below 72 hours, that having a body doesn't help in that case. If they are on a different assignment or booked for a different assignment, they will always leave, despite having a body present. Okay, but enough of that. Let's just hope that our people will extend their contracts. Uh, okay, we have $4,405 and one week is 4400 As said, extending Grizzly by a week instead of a day doesn't really save very much money. Uh, it's only 150 in this case, uh, comparing seven one-day contracts and uh, one one week contract, but we do want to extend him as far as possible to avoid having to pay a higher price once he hits level 4, which will happen in a moment. So we want to spend all of our money on him anyway, because Fox's contract uh, still has 62 hours left and she's far from a level up. And Steven's contract we should be able to manage uh, to renew with the money we get through mine income. And we'll also find, I think, $980 in the church, which we can steal, and some silver down in the mine, which we can pick up and also deposit into our bank account. So we should be fine, even if we spend next to all of our money on Grizzly's contract extension. It should save us some money in the long run. It's always better the next time round, right? Right. Right. And let's get down and talk to Father Walker real quick before we set our mercenaries to their respective assignments. You got my ear. I am Father John Walker. You may call me Father John. I haven't seen you around, Ira. I was worried perhaps something had happened to you. You're looking well, as always. Yep, and as Miguel has told us when we first spoke to him, Father Walker likes Ira. Miguel Cordona needs my assistance? Well, I think I can put together some food and supplies. Fuel, as Miguel is probably well aware, remains next to impossible to acquire. The rest will take time. I do have some things hidden away, 
but I'll need to call upon the generosity of the faithful. Moving too quickly will only bring us all unnecessary attention. I'll get word to Miguel when everything is in order. I'm learning. Mum would have been proud. And there are the level ups. Uh, as Father Walker said, it takes some time for him to scrounge up supplies and transport them to Omerta, or rather have the rebels come and pick them up. So uh, don't just run off trying to get Dimitri right away once you've talked to uh, Father Walker. Dimitri only becomes available. Dimitri is uh, the next rebel we can recruit. Dimitri only becomes available once this entry is blackened out. And we have an another entry in here saying something like, yeah, food has arrived in Omerta. It should be there by tomorrow. And after that, we can recruit Dimitri. But we'll probably not get a chance to get him right away because we need to stay in Drassen to defend. Okay, let's see here. Uh, yeah, we still have a minute to spare, so we can get Ira in a better position. We'll check this uh, room later on, because now we are in a bit of a tight spot time-wise. Alright, we do need quite a bit of time to explore the mine, because energy regeneration has been lowered a lot with 1.13. Well, that's gonna take some time. I think Meltdown is... Uh, a good candidate to explore the mine because we can just send her to sleep even if there's less than 45 minutes left in the hour and the others can do some business but let's check the stuff we have here first equip our mercenaries and then uh, do the mine exploration uh, but before I do that because sometimes the game crashes in the sector inventory for me when I try unloading and loading guns let's take a safe game here Drassen mine defense. It's probably going to be some attacks. And let's see here. Let's reload her guns. She doesn't need to use the uh, armor piercing ammo at the moment, I think, so we'll just uh, give her the regular ball ammo. Or load the regular ball ammo. Uh, the glazer rounds we could use, but they are unreliable even if enemies only have little armor. So I'll stay clear from those. Also, they sell for quite a bit. Well, not the 38 ammo, but the other types of ammo. I'll, I'll use the 9x19 glazer because uh, we do spend a lot of 9x19 ammo, as you will have noticed by now. So it's probably best to preserve as much as possible and use the 9x19 glazer once, uh, as long as it's still semi-useful. Uh, the first aid kit, I think Steven can take this full one and let's get, give the other one to F Grizzly as he's our point man. He might have to patch himself up. He should always have backup of course, but from time to time that's not possible. And we have a nice supply of medical kits by now. Ira has one that's at 100%. Murgus has this one. It's also uh, at a quite high percentage. And we have this third one on Fox that was also full. So we have three full ones and one at th uh, 36%. Uh, I'll hand one to Fox now. She can easily carry that much. And it's always good to have some of these around. You might think, oh yeah, three or four of those. Those will last forever. But if you have some more serious injuries, for example, if Grizzly got dropped down to, say, 20 health, uh, and you'd have to fix 74 points uh, by doctoring, that would cost a lot of medical supplies. So it's great to have these in reserve, because they are not that cheap. They sell for 300 at Bobby Ray's, and you also have to pay for the 1.8 kilograms of weight. Uh, can be quite expensive. And <laughs> as you see, our balance isn't exactly uh, that great. Uh, these scratch pistols are nice. They are very decent, 
but uh, at the low uh, condition percentage they will jam more often than not so I will not use them. Not even, well we could use the 52% as a backup pistol uh, for Steven. Yeah, let, let's do that. We might get lucky and find the toolkit down in the mine so Mergus can start repairing once he's healed up a bit. Uh, but yeah, for now let's uh, let's give Steven this pistol. Might be useful sometimes. Uh, I'm thinking about giving the glazer ammo to Grizzly. Uh, no, let's give it to Meltdown actually and give the hollow points to Grizzly. Meltdown has two pistols, so if she notices uh, an enemy wearing heavy armor, she can just uh, try to hit him with the other pistol. Also, she's, uh, she's ambidextrous, so reloading uh, weapons costs her less, and she's a gunslinger, so reloading pistols costs even less. I think it should only be about six points to reload the Beretta, so switching the glazer ammo to standard ball or even armor piercing rounds does not cost many action points. About the different uh, ammo types, I said I wanted to say something about that in the last episode, and I'll do that now because it fits. Uh, glazer ammo, as you can see here from the general tab in the description, has very poor armor penetration, 0 0.3. That means that the opponent's armor is divided by 0 0.3, so approximately multiplied by 3, before uh, calculating how much damage passes through. If there's any damage that still passes th uh, passes th through, uh, the bullet bullet tumble uh, determines how much it will actually deal in damage. So for Glazer it's times three. That's great, of course, uh, if you get past the, ammo, uh, the armor or if the target doesn't wear any armor at all. So in the beginning these are useful later on when enemies uh, wear thicker armor, they are useless. Then hollow points. These are like a toned down version of the glazer ammo. Uh, they have armor piercing capabilities of 0 0.7, so uh, the armor is only multiplied by 1.4 approximately, uh, uh, but they also only multiply the remaining damage by 1.7. Uh, standard gray ammo, the ball ammo, is just yeah regular. It has uh, no modifiers for armor, penetration and bullet tumble. And the last type we have here, there are more types of ammo in this game, but the last type we have here are regular armor piercing rounds that uh, decrease the enemy's armor, so it's divided by 1.3 before being subtracted from the damage, and do regular tumble, regular damage once they have passed the armor. Uh, Many ammo types are only available as non-standard uh, ammo, as weird as that might sound. But uh, uh, yeah, rifle bullets, for example, will always be in either armor piercing, glazer, hollow point, or one of the other types we'll encounter later on, like uh, tracer uh, rounds, for example. But I'll talk about those once we find some. Mm, yeah. Uh, those are the differences. In the beginning, Glazer and Hollow Point are useful. Later on, they stay useful against Blood Cats because they do not wear any armor. Or if you play the sci fi mode, they are good against one type of the Crepitus creatures. Uh, for us, we should, uh, it means we should spend them early on uh, to preserve some of the armor we can then use against better armored enemies. Uh, she's carrying a lot of ammo. I think we can give this uh, magazine to someone else. Murgus, for example. Yeah, she's good on ammo. Let's put these down here. Excuse me. And Murgus needs to reload. He's good on ammo. Mm, I think we can leave these here and all. These 9x18 uh, bullets are for the Makarovs. Uh, Fox is already carrying some uh, 38 armor piercing rounds, so I think I'll give them to Meltdown. She does have some 9x19 too, but we can use 
those in other weapons as well. So let's convert these quickly. Be careful, there are two types of Makarovs. There's the PM and the PMM. Uh, the only difference, as far as I know, is that the PMM hold 12 rounds, the PM only holds 8. So pay mind to uh, the different magazines. They also look quite similar, but if you look closely you can tell the difference. Alright. So Meltdown has a lot of ammo, that's good because, as you've noticed, <laughs> spending ammo goes fast in this game, especially if you use, if you try to use uh, the suppression system to its fullest. Okay, and Grizzly can use this now full mag. We fill this and the rest goes to Steven. I think he should be fine with only one uh, secondary mag for the Gratch because it's gonna jam up and probably be completely useless by the time he's through eight, uh, not eight, but t 30 bullets anyways. Okay, the backpack uh, can stay on the ground for now. I'll just get the TNT out. We found another stick of dynamite plus attached detonator in the miner's shack. That's very nice. TNT is great to blow up walls and uh, expose enemies who are hiding in a house, for example. The rocks can go here too. For now, we'll drop it. Uh, more wire cutters gives us more flexibility, but we already have two. Let's give these to Grizzly. He does have the room, so doesn't. Uh, it's not a compromise taking them with us. But uh, we, uh, we don't really need three. We can drop them as soon as we need the room. Uh, the chemical brake light is useful at night because it uh, illuminates a certain area and you can then see those uh, see the enemies in th that area from further away it also hinders enemies from passing that area because with the new ai the slightly improved ai enemies will avoid uh, light spots bright spots in darkness so uh one instinct would be to give this to Steven, because Steven is our night ops guy. I would give this to someone else, because I don't want to spend action points throwing the brake light with Steven, the guy who is the best fighter at night. I'd rather have someone else throw it who's not uh, that great at night. And I think I'll give it to Grizzly, not that he's not a great fighter, even at night. Uh, even though he doesn't get the night bonus uh, as Steven does, but he has the best range, so I think he's a good candidate to take this brake light. Uh, gum we don't need, and yeah, we can sell off the speed loader later on or take it as backup for now. Fox has the room, so that's not a problem. All right. That's that for now. F I prefer having these TNT sticks further back. It shouldn't really matter much, but let's give them to Murgus and drop them so they are moved to his position, as you can see here on the map. Good. Then let's assign some things to do. Uh, we do have the field hospital, the combat support hospital in the middle sector, but as it was already 1711 when we completed our fight for the mine, we couldn't have gotten, couldn't have got back to the middle sector. That uh, takes five minutes, uh, so it would have been 1716, so too late to get any use out of that hour, assignment-wise. That's why Fox is going to doctor in this sector for now, and then move at 1800 hours, then move to the middle sector with her patient Murgus, because he's quite hurt, missing 24 points, so he's gonna be a patient. Uh, the game will, in 1.13, ask you if you want to pre perform surgery on a patient if uh, the, uh, uh, the mercenary set as doctor has the paramedic or doctor skill. Uh, I'd recommend not doing so, unless you really need to get your people up fast. If they are hurt bad and you know there's an attack coming 
and you need every health point you can scrounge up. Clicking yes on the surgery will cost a lot of medical kit. So I recommend not doing that if you have the time to uh, patch them up normally. The surgery has nothing to do with regaining lost stats damage because as the description on paramedics says, uh, you can now cure stats damage. That means if you get hit in the shoulder and lose dexterity or in the legs and lose agility or in the chest and lose health or in the head and lose wisdom, these stats, uh, stats reductions can now be cured by paramedics and doctors here. Uh, has ability to perform surgical intervention by using medical bag on wounded soldier is the surgery I warned you about and can heal lost stats from critical hits by the surgery or doctor assignment is what I talked about just a second ago. So this uh, skill is very useful, a must have, and but uh, be careful with the question if you want to perform surgery. Think about if you really need it because it will drain your medical medical bag a lot. We could afford it now because we have quite a few medical bags, but don't waste r resources. It will only come back to bite you in the neck later on. Okay, so Murgus uh, can be patched up by Fox. Grizzly, he cannot really do much useful now. Uh, we could train him up to be a backup mechanical guy because we are a bit short in mechanical uh, expertise. He could do that, but uh, his low dexterity will hamper his repair speed and he's also primitive, that means he doesn't like doing boring stuff like repairing. Uh, but it also hampers his other uh, assignment options, so he's not that great at training militia even once we get his leadership up. And we have a great uh, trainer, military trainer with Steven. So, yeah. Uh, we can have Steven train militia, but we need to get some money first because I blew it all on uh, the contract renewal. Uh, let's see, we sh still have a minute left, so Grizzly can go and kick in the door to get the money we need for the militia training because it costs 750. You also need at least 20 loyalty uh, in the city you try to get militia up in to be able to find enough uh, civilians who are willing to uh, be trained into fighters. Okay, so Ira can train up her leadership because we want to use her as a militia trainer as soon as possible. Grizzly, as said, we need him to kick open the door. Meltdown will just sleep after exploring the mine, so we don't need to worry about her. And Steven can uh, start getting uh, militia force up. Just to be on the safe side, in case it takes too long and we roll over to 16, because I'm too slow, uh, I'll set him up to practice his medical skill. So he's a bit faster in bandaging. But uh, I have high hopes that we can get the door open in time. Standing by. Okay. Run, Grizzly. Okay. Otherwise, he needs to do something else for one hour and then continue. That wouldn't be a problem. Blast it. Over here. Yep. Uh, the stuff back here belongs to the church, so we need to actually steal it. Cool. So don't be spotted by anyone when doing Got so, it. because it will. Nothing. Oh, there's no money this time. There's usually some money in here. Nothing. Well, then Steven will have to wait until we get some money together. Okay. That's okay. can practice medical for now, and Grizzly can train his... Yeah, let's have him train his either medical or mechanical, I'd say. I think I'll go with mechanical, because then later on, once he reaches mechanical of 45 or so, he can start repairing things and will get more dexterity and mechanical by doing so. Alright, Meltdown, I'll send down into the mines. Luckily she's not claustrophobic, because claustrophobic characters will be scared in mines, and especially if they are left alone. See, I don't know we don't have anyone who's claustrophobic. 
But we might get someone later on that can show you. Alright, let's get Meltdown down. Oh, sh yeah. Down from here as well. And then down I into the you. mine. Yeah, you can probably skip ahead by about at least five minutes. It's just gonna be running around in the mine to gather up some silver. You can go to the sector. Gotcha. What uh, the hell yeah, is toolkit, that? perfect. Gotcha. Got something perfect. Here. We really needed gotcha. the toolkit. Well, we could have gone out without, uh, gone on without that? it, but it's what very the helpful hell to is that? have it. Gotcha. What the hell is that? I hear you. I hear you. What the hell is that? You can get gotcha. quite a bit of here. money through these gotcha. silver nuggets you find here. I hear you. What the hell is that? I hear you. It's always worth checking the mines. First aid kit and toolkit are also so so gotcha. valuable in the beginning. Don't want what to miss out on stuff like that? that. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. And I hear you. most mines do have more than one sector. You can see that here you can travel southwards. I hear you. Got something here. Got something here. Gotcha. Got something here. You can of course here. also talk to the miners. They'll give you some hints of what to do. And this AA has been in the game for as long as I can remember. It's probably it was meant as a placeholder for something useful they can say, but it was never removed or replaced by something by an actual line. Ah, uh, gotcha. Sorry. I hear you. Okay, let's I get hear uh, to doing something useful. Again, you can check uh, this mini map by right clicking here or pressing the insert key on your keyboard. It's great to see which of the areas you've already explored. Gotcha. And do yourself a favor, don't pick these up by hand. Just, sorry, go to the sector inventory and grab them from here. Let's see how much this is. Probably about a thousand. Let's see. Yeah, <laughs> one thousand and one. For some reason you can also put silver in the gun slot, in the rifle slot. That's a bit odd. Odd. Okay, uh, yeah, I should have brought the backpack. But uh, it's okay. We'll just leave this here and get it later on. It's no big deal. No big deal at all. If you f are feeling malicious, you can also train your guys up on these miners. You. you can just shoot them or punch them until your marksmanship and your uh, dexterity, agility and strength increase without the loyalty in Drassen dropping and without anyone attacking you. But uh, yeah, I don't like doing that. I hear you. Gotcha. They are fighting for I'm us to in the mines down here, Got to, something here to get us some income, so we shouldn't punish them for that. Yeah. And they have everything under control here. down here. Gotcha. I hear you. Nonetheless, we are helping he them I hear by you. collecting Got some silver. Here. I hear you. Gotcha. What the hell is that? Gotcha. What the hell is that? Gotcha. Gotcha. Oh, oh and oh. Meltdown is a bit tired. She can sleep for a few more or rest for a few moments. You don't really have to set her to sleep. Stamina will go up anyway, but yeah. A quick nap. It's I never hear hurt you. anyone. Got something here. I hear you. Gotcha. Got something here. Gotcha. 
having a couple of more so uh, mercenaries Hi, down here is of course a bit quicker gotcha. it speeds things up but the others are gotcha. busy so let's keep them that way I hear check ya. this there might be some brake lights and TNT in here so I should have actually left some more of stuff in the first sector yeah. hmm oh, TNT got it uh, she cannot fit the other one but yeah that's okay I hear we can ya. just come back later in a second, actually. Gotcha. Okay, now all of this is explored too, and we can I hear ya. rack up some more money. I know there are some hotkeys to combine stuff uh, and reload, uh, unload weapons and such, but I kind of like doing it manually. All right, let's get back here. Then drop the TNT. Don't worry, it won't blow up if you throw it. Grab this. And move back. I should have brought the backpack, but I forgot. I, I hear was planning on bringing it, but gotcha. yeah. Gotcha. Doing commentary, talking while playing I hear takes some of the concentration away from the game, of course. Gotcha. Now we have some money for I militia training. Almost done with this part. Gotcha. Or rather, this uh, boring running around in the mine. But it really does help in the beginning to get the extra money. And the toolkit is of great help. Especially to us since we do not or didn't have a toolkit before picking this one. And let's get rid of this stuff just passing the TNT to Murgis to teleport it to his location instead of having it lie around in front of the mine and let's get back down for a quick look or a quick grab of first aid and TNT should have actually <laughs> dropped more stuff. She doesn't have the explosive skill to safely attach the detonator. So I'll leave it like that for now. Yeah, there's no way we can optimize our inventory to get that stuff with her. No, that's just sorry for the unnecessary time wasting. But that's what you get for recording. <laughs> Got it. Okay. And let's move her up. And get her away I from the border. Gotcha. She really doesn't have to get shot at right away gotcha. if enemies appear in the sector. I hear you. Let's get her down here. Okay, she can sleep until 1800 hours. And drop this stuff on the ground. Okay, the first aid kit, now that she is the only one who doesn't have any medical supplies, can go to Meltdown. Let's do it like this. And... Now we are set to advance the timer. These are all set. Steven can do something else once he is uh, once he is uh, once uh, the hour rolls over. Now that we have the money, and we should also get about uh, well, maybe seven hundred from the mine. 
No, it should be more, actually. It should be about a thousand. Okay. Meltdowns. Uh, up again. Murgus has been patched up a bit. Three points by Fox's doctoring. And the others made some progress as well. Uh, these numbers up here, when training or doing something else, do have significance. Um, for the doctors, uh, it's not that clear, but uh, it's about the value they have here divided by uh, 7, usually, uh, approximately. Then the training here, this just tells you how many chances of gaining an advancement point they will get per hour of training. Uh, stats increases in this game work a bit different than in other RPGs. Uh, let me explain real quick. For the physical stats, health, agility, dexterity, strength and wisdom, you need 50 advancement points to reach the next level, to gain one point. This stays the same no matter how high your stat is. If you have a stat of 1, you have the same requirement of 50 advancement points to uh, reach 2 as you'd have going from 99 to 100. For the other skills, for leadership, marksmanship, explosives, mechanical and medical, you only need 25 advancement points per uh, per level up, or per stats up, I'd say, I should say. Level ups work a bit differently. These do increase, uh, for these the points required for the next level up do increase with higher levels. Um, it's 350 advancement points for going from level 1 to level 2, then it's 700 for 2 to 3, 1050 for 3 to 4, etc. So it's uh, 350 more each level. Now, uh, advancement points are uh, gained by doing things or practicing or being uh, a student, yeah, or by running around, traveling, etc., by shooting at enemies or doctoring or training militia. Nearly every action you take in this game can award you advancement points to your stats. Uh, the reason why it takes longer to, for example, increase marksmanship from 99 to 100 than it takes from increasing it from 35 to 36 is simple. You do need 25 advancement points for both of these increases, but the chance to actually get an advancement point out of one of these chances for an advancement point are lower when your stat is higher. Uh, fr uh, you just take 100% uh, base chance, then subtract the current value you have in a skill. For example, if uh, Grizzly practices his mechanical skill, as he is doing so, uh, right now, he gets per hour four chances to gain an advancement skill. For these advancement skills, the game checks his mechanical skill. He's at 24 now. So he has a 60, uh, a 76 percent chance to gain an advancement skill. Or rather, he has four 76 percent chances to gain advancement skills. Uh, and you can clearly see if you are already at 99 uh, uh, skill the chance of gaining an advancement point is only 1%. That's why it takes so much longer to gain points at higher levels. Wisdom plays a role in this as well. Uh, it always plays a role unless you are advancing one of your physical attributes, so Agidex, Strength and Health and Wisdom, by practice, uh, um, by doing something not by practicing or by being a student. So only if you travel, for example, or if you beat up an enemy, uh, or if you sneak behind an enemy, these chances are not dependent on wisdom. If you train these by practice, for example, wisdom does play a role. 
and the role wisdom plays is quite simple. For every two points of wisdom above 50, you get a 1% increase on the chance to get an advancement point. So, for example, if you have wisdom 72, like Grizzly here, he's 22 points above 50, that means he gets an 11% chance on his 76% chance of increasing his mechanical skill, or rather of gaining an advancement point towards increasing his mechanical skill. Uh, so, yeah, 11% of 76 is about 8, so his actual chance of gaining an advancement point isn't 76, but 84. And it works the same for wisdom below 50. For every two points of wisdom below 50, you uh, lose 1%. Or you have a 1% penalty on the chance of gaining an advancement point. Uh, there are different types of advancing. <coughs> Three types, actually. One is by doing, one is by failing. Or rather, I should say, one is by doing something successfully, one is by doing something unsuccessfully, and one is by training or the teacher-student assignment. If you gain ad an advancement point uh, by training, the only difference is that wisdom always is taken into account, even if it's a physical stat. That's the only difference between a successful uh, application of a skill and training that skill. Failures can also grant you advancement points, but the difference is that failures will never actually increase the stat. They can only bring you, bring you right to the edge, but the actual uh, advancement point that pushes his mechanical from 24 to 25 has to be a success or done through training. It cannot be a failure. But that's uh, the only difference between successes and failures. Uh, you do gain more chances at advancement points if you succeed in most cases. So you will increase your stats faster if uh, you succeed. For example, if you hit an enemy instead of missing him, but you will also gain chances for advancement points when uh, failing. Okay, let's keep going here. Uh, Fox and Murgus should move over to the middle sector because I want to make use of the combat support hospital. And one thing I need to say before doing so, uh, I did change one more thing in one of the XML files, but I did that after recording the INI file video, so that's why I didn't mention it in there. I changed the bonus the Combat Support Hospital grants from a 100% increase to doctoring speed to only 25%, because I find it overpowered if you just double your doctoring speed in the Combat Support Hospital. Also, uh, now, with the only 25% uh, increase to doctoring speed through the combat support hospital, it falls in line better with the hospital in Cambria, because this proper, fully equipped hospital only grants a 50% increase uh, in doctoring speed. So I found that a bit weird to have this combat support hospital, hospital grant a 200% doctoring speed, so 100% increase, and this only 150%, so 50% increase. I changed that to only 25%. It's still a small bonus, and we have the added bonus that the doctoring supplies we need are... Uh, the, the drain on the bag is decreased to 40% when using this uh, combat support hospital, so it's still very useful and powerful, but uh, it's not as overpowered as it's normally the case. Alright, so uh, Fox and Murgis will move over to the other sector to make use of that facility, while Steven can now start uh, training Militia. It will cost us 750. Uh, and here, with these points... Oh yeah, I wasn't done with that. Uh, if you have someone set to repair, I'll just do it to show you. Repair items, you'll see how many percent points uh, of uh, damage he can repair, modified by the repair ease. For example, if Murgus were to repair this MP5K, he'd only repair six points per hour. That's not too much, but it helps in the beginning. Good repair guys will go 
up really high if you have a level 10 mechanical 100 dexterity 100 uh, repair man uh, doing the repairs he should be at about 30 or so I think 30 points per hour experience level does increase a repair speed by the way not only mechanical and dexterity you also gain chances uh, of uh, gaining dexterity and mechanical when repairing I think it's uh, two chances for advancement points in de dexterity uh, no no uh, the repaired points divided by two exactly so if you repair say 20 per hour you get 10 uh, chances to get an advancement point in dexterity and also 10 in mechanical Murgus would gain three or four points per hour I'm not sure how it's rounded exactly okay and uh, the militia progress speed uh, you need to divide this by 10 and then it's the percentage you'll gain in civilian training here so uh, you can see how far the military training is in this tab we are at zero percent right now in the next hour after the next hour has passed it's gonna be 13 percent so uh, we can assign someone else too we could assign someone else too to help steven in repairing uh, in <laughs> training militia but uh, that's uh, not uh, really possible right now because well meltdown could help out and i think she should actually do that she is malicious so she gets a small penalty on her militia training capabilities but she can still help out a bit you can see the vast difference in uh, training speed she only gets six uh, percent done as opposed to steven's 13 but it's better than her doing nothing. We could also send her to the mid sector with uh, Fox and Murgus to uh, have her patched up. But uh, the doctoring speed is divided among the pa patients. So if you want to make the most of your mercenaries, just set one patient at a time and uh, then swap the patient it. out once one is done or healed up far enough that you are. Uh, fine with him staying at not f uh, fully healed status okay so he can train militia with meltdown's help and grizzly plus ira can continue practicing while fox and mergus move out okay uh, but before we advance the time again i'll just do the rest Standing of the okay. checking the sector we also need to Done. give grizzlies shotgun okay. to someone else of course or at least yeah he could actually keep it okay. it's only at 73 percent but it's quite reliable so it doesn't jam as often we don't really have the Done. ammo to support it though yeah. okay. we'll see about that okay. let's get a look into those other buildings and talk to Nothing. the bartender here Done. and then Done. we'll advance the timer okay okay you can also meet some other NPCs in here from time to time for example uh, an explosives a dealer and a blood cat vendor establishment I am one of the DeSantos bartending brothers. We are famous all Ruka wide for our drinks. Or rather, our blood cat parts vendor. He doesn't actually sell blood cats. I believe you know of us. My brother has spoken of you. The soldiers who are going to save Al Ruko. I tell you, we wish you the best of luck cleaning out the mess this country is in. Yes, you are not the first to notice that we look very similar. I do not understand since the differences are obvious to me. We import all of our drinks except the rum. It was made locally before the war began. He has to offer pretty much the same as his brother we met before. The best liquor so. around. Only number one brand names. Well, you think about it. Yep, I think about okay. it. Uh, once I manage to get a knife okay. so we can actually cut up the t-shirts and Build some more okay. Molotov cocktails. Nothing. 
Okay, nothing. Done. Yeah. I don't think there are okay. any items in here, but it doesn't take that long to check. We don't want to miss out on anything that might be of use to us. Hmm. Ooh, a rubber band. Done. One of the few no. items in the game that uh, doesn't have any use okay. at all. Done. I think they intended uh, on you being able to attach a platinum watch to TNT no. by using a rubber band to make a makeshift detonator, but uh, that feature never made it into the game, or that merge. Okay. I th I'm sure there are mods out there okay. where you can do that. Alright, that should be enough. And let's see. So Fox and Murgus uh, travel to the northern sector. I think I'll send Grizzly with them in case the enemy okay. decides to attack us uh, from the airport. Yep, he can help them out. And the others will stay here. They should be fine in case of an attack because we have decent positions here, even though both of them are wounded. And you can always fall back and retake the sector if things get too nasty. I'm in position and available, as always. Okay. We also need to get these into position, of course. You Standing call? by. Got so you? they can actually do something if they Got are attacked, you? if the sector is attacked. I think okay. this house, th this roof, is a decent spot to be in. You call? Uh, the sweatshop is also decent, but uh, here we have the advantage of the rather small you roof call? where enemies will be close by, so we can, once they climb up, we can shoot at them. Uh, be careful though, after some time, mercenaries who are uh, working on assignment will sometimes get up into standing position. So. Be careful with that. If you enter the sector, be ready to get them down again, even if you have them set to crouched or prone position. Oh no, not doctor, but in this case, facility, combat support hospital, doctor. You do need some uh, stats requirements. You need to meet some stats requirements to be able to use the hospital. You need at least wisdom 60 and medical 60 to be able to use the combat support hospital. Wisdom 60 shouldn't be a problem for most doctors, but uh, medical 60 can be a tr can be troublesome for uh, other medical personnel like Ira, for example, or people like Blood and Buns who do have quite high medical skill, but not as high as you require for uh, the use of the combat support hospital. And Murgus will be patient and no surgery for him. We aren't in that much of a hurry. Yeah, and Grizzly sh Oh, no, sorry, that was not intended. Grizzly right, can also to be. get here. Done. Okay. And you can Done. stay down here so we have eyes on the slow area. Or, yeah, uh, they should be coming from the north. Done. I think he might be more useful on the roof. If you can spot them far off, we, now that we have the sector under control, we know that they cannot be close to the building when they attack. So it's not that much of a problem of not having eyes on the ground. Uh, the other facility here, the small sleazy bar, will cost you some money per hour, I think $15, and grant a chance of increasing loyalty by a percent and getting your mercenary drunk. I don't want to have Grizzly drunk because we might have to defend the sector here. So let's uh, set him to practicing mechanical again. Also keep an eye on your uh, mercenary's energy bar. Their performance will decrease with uh, a decreasing energy bar and only the right number, only the maximum is important. The, uh, number before the slash will regenerate in uh, a few minutes. Well, that's not a problem, but the maximum is the problem. Always send your mercenaries to sleep if they drop below about 90, because their performance will decrease once they reach 84. Also, that's ret uh, retroactive. So if you start out, for example, doctoring with uh, energy above uh, 85, you'll get shown a decent 
progress speed here, but uh, the only the slower speed is calculated for this past hour if they drop to below 85 within this hour or at the end of this hour at in our case 1900 hours when sleep is evaluated so do be careful about that i think she should still have one hour more in her before she drops below 85 but we'll see about that and the others are fine for now we could send ira to sleep also uh, it's never a good practice to just uh, advance time for six hours have these mercenaries work and drop to uh, 65 or so energy because then when enemies appear especially now that we have no vision of enemy movement in this area there could be enemies uh, at any moment who then attack within about one and a half hours so you don't have any time to prepare for this attack then or rather your mercenaries are so tired that you'd need more time to prepare for the attack so always keep an eye on this uh, energy bar you'll get more out of m your mercenaries beca because they will work at the higher uh, uh, progress uh, speed and you are more flexible in case of attacks so something to keep in mind let's advance slowly Always keep an eye on enemy movement, there's no hurry, we can react to things happening better if we go by 5 minutes or only 30 minutes time compression, not 60. Okay, now Fox is at, oh, she's more resilient than I thought, she's at 88 now, uh, but still she might uh, now take a nap. Also Murgus. Uh, as a patient doesn't lose any energy, sh so he's fine uh, doing something else now, like repairing. Don't have someone set as a patient when their doctor is asleep. The doctor will lose energy, so he will, even if you don't pay attention to the energy, will go to sleep if he uh, or she gets too tired. But the patients will just uh, stay patient and only regen health at their idle rate. Health regeneration when not being doctored depends on how uh, how much he, uh, the mercenary in question has to do if he's on duty uh, repairing things he regenerates more slowly uh, as opposed to when he's on patient for example you can be a patient even if there's no doctor present they just uh, they'll just regenerate then but you can also set them on duty squad uh, one for example uh, and they will still uh, regenerate better than while repairing. Uh, but uh, we do need to get some repairs in, so I think that's the best Murgis can do. And he should try fixing the MP5K up a bit to make it more reliable. Uh, Grizzly can pass on the shells. To nah, you don't really need that many shotgun shells, usually because the shotguns are slow, you don't get off that many shots per uh, per battle. Hmm. Thinking this is pretty broken too, we could repair it and uh, he'd get a 3% bonus on the repairing speed, I think. Yeah, but we don't really need the shotgun, we don't have the slugs and shot to support it. Now we also have some buckshot, but only one shell, so I'll stay with the shells for now, the slugs. Uh, yeah. Let's keep this on Grizzly for now, even though we might not use it at all. Alright, so Murgus is set to repair while Fox regenerates some of her energy to be ready for any attacks. Uh, Steven can still do some militia training. Now we are at 19%, it's just uh, her 6% and Steven's 13, adds up to 19 is great progress. If you have uh, worse trainers it's gonna be a lot slower. <coughs> okay but because this episode is starting to get long again I'll end it here. We'll do some more strategic stuff next time and then attack the airport. I hope you've enjoyed watching this uh, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye!